Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Masterful Conversations podcast, where we learn about leadership from the men who serve or are currently serving as worshipful master in a regular lodge of free and accepted masons. I am Brother Matthew Wagstaff, a past master of uh, Eureka Lodge number 36. And I am past master Mark Alexander of Sons of Kings Lodge number 123. All right. I'm out of Rochester, New York. And Pastor Pastor Alexander. Out of Brooklyn, New York. Out of Brooklyn, New York. And let me give a special shout out to my worship master because, you know, worship master is Gerald Boyce the second, um, yeah, at present presides in my lodge. I love that actually. Yeah, you know, shout out to shout out to yeah. Worshipful Master Jermaine Myers, who currently presides as Worshipful Master for Eureka Lodge number 36. We both uh preside um or are both from the uh, most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge of the state of New York. We're currently presiding is most worshipful Gregory Rosen Smith Jr., serving as our Grand Master. Um, this is our fourth episode. Um, it got a lot of positive feedback. So thank you, everyone who has been listening in, tuning in, giving us great feedback about things that we want to think about going forward. It's been a, a positive experience so far. Um, but before we get into this episode, just a quick disclaimer. The views and opinions are our own and not reflect our lodge or our grand lodge. Um, the, this is intended for entertainment purposes, educational purposes, but please reflect back to your own jurisdictions and your own practices in that jurisdiction. All right. So this episode, free, free conversation right now. Uh, we are not interviewing anybody right at this moment. We will, we will be having conversation. Uh, Past Master Alexander and I will be having conversations just so you can get a sense to know who we are. Um, mm -hmm. You've seen us interview other Past Masters over the last three episodes. Uh, we thought it, that it's important that you understand who we are uh, as men, as masons, as past masters in our respective lodges, get a little sense about why uh, we decided to do this podcast and um, just talk a little bit about our journey as as past masters, as virtual masters, talk a little bit about leadership and kind of the things that we experienced throughout our time. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to spend our time just just talk, chatting through those, those topics right now. So with that being said, I guess we can we sort of kick it off. Um, for those who don't know, both me and um, Past Master Alexander served together uh, at the same time in the years 2022 and 2023. So we are classmates and that we served in the East at the same time. Um, I think Past Master Alexander, um, you know, he, he, he won some awards and, and all those sort of things for being worth for <laughs> Master. So, you know, um, I'm still playing catch up with him from a from an accomplishment standpoint. <laughs> but, you know, kudos to him and his, and his brothers and Sons of Kings for all, that's, the, that's, all the great work. That's the brothers. Did. That ain't me. That's the brothers. I can't do nothing <laughs> without them. <laughs> yeah, he could talk about leadership more than I can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, all right, I'll just start for a little bit because I have a little, little more extensive background um, because... Um, uh, I came from another jurisdiction that wasn't Prince Hall before I came to Prince Hall, when, in which I was worship master over there too. I originally was from um, Epsilon Lodge number 124, which is only one number after the one I got now, which happened to be a coincidence. But um, that was under the Supreme Council of Louisiana, which is a Scottish right jurisdiction that has a lot of history. Um, I advise everybody to look that up. Um, look them up and everything that they did and you know you'll see the history within that but um so I first came into masonry there in November 11 2000 that's when I got initiated and I was raised in August of that 2001 um I became master the first time in that large 2007 I served one year and then then I went back um 2011 and 12. So I served three years under there. Oh man, you got a three year head start on me, man. Come yeah, on, man. exactly. Oh, I mean, God. I mean, I also was a uh, most wise master over there too. So I had a um, that was all of the leadership positions I had in over there, particularly. Um, then I came over to Prince Hall on November, oh no, October twenty sixth, I believe it is. I think it, I think I'm, I'm not confusing that with the Sons of Kings year numbers, <laughs> but um. Uh, but still, 2013, even October, November on 2013, um, joined Sons of Kings, um, December 2013, 
and became worship master 2022 and 2023 uh definitely was a pleasure uh being worship master and uh i learned a lot and the reason that uh, this is a little also extra background to let some people know there's a thing that our particular jurisdiction does where if you come from another jurisdiction and you hold the worship master's title they can is up to the grand master to allow you to become an affiliated past master. So that's what I came as when I came first came over to Prince Hall. I was affiliated past master. So I had the past master status. I uh, became, I was interested in being worship master in Sons of Kings because I felt I had something to offer. I felt that I wanted the experience of being a past master in Prince Hall because it was um, much more detailed experience than I had in my old jurisdiction. And I just wanted the experience of, you know, being a master here because i you know i definitely knew it was different so that's the reason why i did it and the background of um being a worship master here and in sons of games 123. nice nice yeah i did i did not know mark that you had already two years <laughs> or, uh, three years excuse me a worshipful master underneath, underneath your belt before you came over to prince hall man oh my yeah. gosh that's fantastic. that's why it wasn't so hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They tell you like that first year, you don't know anything. Second year, you're just getting your feet underneath you. So to have that mm -hmm. already established to a certain extent, I know mm -hmm. it's a little bit different, uh, yeah. but now I appreciate you sharing that. So mm -hmm. my journey is a little, little different. Um, I joined the craft uh, Prince Hall uh, June 19th of 2004 in Ionic Lodge, number 88 in Buffalo, New York, um, mm -hmm. 21 years old. Fresh, fr I think I was still in college when I joined the craft. Yeah, I um, was 25 when I joined, so I wasn't too far behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they was calling me Joe College and all those things when they were, they were doing the <laughs> investigation committee. I think I had like a little blazer on or something like that. I came from like a, a club mm -hmm. meeting or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, uh, joined the craft then 21 years old in 2004. Um, started off as a master of ceremonies. Uh, worked through both of the deacons chairs. And then after graduate school in Buffalo, I moved to Rochester, which is about an hour away from Buffalo for anybody who's familiar with the space area here in West New York. Uh, I moved out here for work and I still was active. I actually served as senior deacon in my lodge in Buffalo for probably, I want to say two years, uh, even though I was an hour away. And so um, doing that, still staying active, still staying financial, um, there came a time when I just thought that there was a, a need for me to be able to um, use my my skills and my interest in masonry and take it to the next level here in Rochester. Um, and so the brothers had actually um, made me an honorary member um, the year before I actually became the treasurer of the the lodge here in Rochester after I demitted from Ionic to Eureka so that I could uh, serve in officer capacity. So served as a treasurer for one year and then moved from treasurer after that one year into the senior warden's um, role after that one year, served as senior warden for two years and then moved into the master chair um, in 2022 and 2023. Um, so great two years, learned a lot about myself, learned a lot about the craft, learned a lot about leadership, what not to do, what to do, mm -hmm. um, that mm -hmm. we can dive into a little bit more, but that's my journey there. Uh, well, I want to mention something that um, that's sort of similar to what we did, and I know it was valuable to you. I'm pretty sure it was. I served as secretary of Sons of Kings before I became worship master of the lodge, and I know knowing that seat, how important that was, and everything the details was it. It was a immensely helpful of being worship master, and I'm pretty sure it was the same as being treasurer of uh, knowing that seat and working with the secretary. So you know those what is needed to be done for those positions before you became master. Absolutely, okay. man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like being treasurer, understanding the books, mm -hmm. understanding the um the operations of the business of the uh not the business, but the lodge mm -hmm. um definitely helped out a lot as a master. <laughs> and yeah. so yeah, it, it was definitely needed. And I, I would recommend that it, it usually say, like I've heard brothers say, uh, the secretary and treasurer are reserved for past masters. Mm -hmm. I would I would definitely recommend uh, any brother that's aspiring in leadership to understand those two seats for sure, even if they serve as like assistant secretary or assistant treasurer in their spaces. 
Definitely. Yeah. Or even, you know, if you are, uh, once you go into like the war and spot, even before that, just go over there and sit with them for a while to understand the books uh, from both positions. You don't need to be there fully, but you need to understand those books because as worship master, even all, every position is there that lay like your arms, you know yes. what I mean? Because if anything goes wrong in that lodge, even though it's the secretary's duty, the grandmaster isn't coming to the secretary. Nope. He's going to come to you. <laughs> so it's important that you kind of know those positions. So I would definitely recommend um, if you don't do it, but by the time you're a principal officer, if by the time you're a principal officer, go over and talk to the secretary and see his mm -hmm. books and same thing with the treasurer. Absolutely. Definitely. And there was mm -hmm. another thing too, like as I was senior warden and maybe even as you, when you were a warden on this side, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. those two years that I sat in that seat in the West, um, mm -hmm. I spent some time, some considerable amount of time in this constitution and in our bylaws. Of so, um, there was a group of us, group of our brothers, um, who actually we dedicated our mornings at the time it was our current senior warden, brother Tracy Williams, our treasurer back then, um, brother Terrell Brady, and I, um, also another brother, uh, Kirk Robinson. Uh, we spent time in the morning just focused in on the Constitution, understanding the, the different pieces of the Constitution, diving into the um, the bylaws, just so we can be familiar with what they were about. And so as we were moving up through the leadership ranks, just understanding um, some of those important documents that help rule and guide our organization, because it's hard for you to to speak with some level of intelligence about how we govern ourselves as an organization if you've never been in the book before. So that was another key point. Like if you've never been to constitution and you are warden, like you need to be in that book like today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, you definitely need to study that constitution and the bylaws. And I'm going to tell you this, how, how, how important that I feel. Every time I served in any position besides in the Scottish right as a leader, I wind up um, addressing the bylaws where we made some changes mm -hmm. in every house. But right now, I did <laughs> in, in the in Royal Lodge and Mount Mariah and Sons of Kings, as you, you was that session, we mm -hmm. changed our bylaws. Yep, yep, yep. You know, got those updated. Um, and even on the other side, I did the same thing. When I was Most Wise Master, when I was Worship Master, I definitely addressed those bylaws to see if any you know, discrepancies or any, you know, things that we needed to change to update. I definitely did that. You know, I looked at it before I became master. And if I even like um, if I could talk to the worship master at the time to him address it, if he did, he didn't. Like in Mount Moriah, we got it started at the previous ex and high priest and then we finished it out under me. But uh, those type of things are very important. You, like I always tell anybody in order to play any game, you got to know the rules. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I stress that to same thing at my job. I You know, I was a trainer for a while. OJI. I always, um, when I'm training them, I, I go look at this manual, read that for a little while in your free time, morning, before, at work, after work, you have to know the rules, mm -hmm. anything that you do, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So before we dive into a little more detail, now that you know a little bit about us, um, just wanted to spend a little bit of time just grounding everybody in terms of why this podcast, why the Masterful Conversations podcast, um, it really came as sort of a, a way to archive um, the history of, of our craft of the brothers in this jurisdiction and, and brothers in general, we, we would love to, for this to expand further than just New York state um, if possible, but really um, both me and past master Alexander coming out of the East um, having a desire to continue to grow as men and as leaders in this craft, but also to learn um, and hear the stories about leadership we see through the various text message threads and other conversations how leadership is just a, a huge opportunity for not just our organization, but just for us in general as, as men, Black men, um, just as a society. And so um, being able to talk to men who have served in the East, who have served as the, the head, quote unquote, head of, the, of, our, of our Masonic bodies um, and really understand how they view leadership we thought it would be important to be able to capture those stories, be able to capture their thoughts um, and be able to document uh, how leadership is being um, expressed uh, through the various men who have served or are currently serving. And then also to archive their voices uh, for future generations. And so uh, I would have loved to be able to have a, a video image of 
um, the brothers who brought me up into the craft who are no longer with long, no longer with us right now. And so uh, being able to have this opportunity to capture the voices, their likeness, their be able to see them speak um, at this time um, so that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, you can go back and say, OK, this is what um, Matt said in 2024 this is what Mark said this is what he was thinking at that time. We, we thought it was just super valuable to be able to capture those. And um, to be 100% transparent, the brainchild of this particular podcast is 1% Matt. <laughs> and Matt brought me into the podcast. But as uh, the saying goes, great minds think alike. I'm now far and that's the short version of that saying. <laughs> but to take that short clip of it, um, I was already doing this type of thing as far as definitely archiving uh, the history of brothers. Because at first, the first thing I did um, with, when I was master... I was interviewed on Zoom, my my past masters of Sons of Kings Lodge 123, in which I'm still in the process of doing that. I have two more past masters I have to do, and Derek volunteered to do me. <laughs> and then we also had uh, one other past master um, that passed away. So I'm going to have to do like a group thing with the past masters to get reflect and get his um, side of that. But yeah, I started off doing that, um, recording that history. And so I have that. And then um, I express, you know, I express the same thing to my 33rd class, <laughs> the J.D. Shook class of 2022. And we're doing that with our classmates. We're actually recording, um, making videos and interviews of our classmates and getting that history down for each other and for, like you said, prosperity in general. Um, and again, to look out for the future, I'm actually starting tomorrow will be my personal podcast um, that I'm um, starting with, actually with a sister. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah, Sister Kawana Howard, the worthy matron of um, Mount Zion chapter, um, where we're going to be doing exactly this. Again, it's just detailing the history of um, brothers and sisters. Um, I have some other ways I'm going to play with that. It ain't particularly have to be the older, it might start off with older people, but I got um, some other ways I'm going to go down in that podcast too. But it's all about recording the history, um, getting these stories down, because I, I love a good story. I love a good conversation. Uh, I'm not, I say for myself, I know a lot of people, and I'm still amazed how many people I know or met since I've been in Prince Hall, mm -hmm. <laughs> particularly. But um, if you think you know me and we never had a conversation, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know you. You know, we just know each other's past. It. That's how um, my telltale sign, if I really know a person, if I had a conversation with them in a conversation that I remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's um, a little more background to this uh, particular podcast. Again, it's all Matt, and I thank him for bringing me into it. And uh, I'm enjoying this uh, ride as we just get started. And just that to say, uh, we do have a couple of brothers already outside of our jurisdiction lined up. Uh, one in North right. Carolina, one in Virginia, you know, so <laughs> I ain't giving no names or whatever, but, you know, we got a couple of lined up already. So Absolutely. Time comes, don't come. Definitely. And I appreciate you, brother. Definitely. It's been a pleasure. Um, as the old saying goes, iron sharpens iron. So, yeah. you know, we oh, definitely... talk about like our, just our relationship. Like, I, I don't know particularly when we met, but it had to be one of my probably my first mid year. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. I think when we yeah. were with Sandino. Oh, we did. Like, okay, yeah. all right. If we, if we mentioned it, then let it let it be. All right, I wasn't sure. I all think it was like 2014 it, or something like that. I wanted to yeah. make years, man. Make years is that okay. time where you just build relationships, <laughs> just connect. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But those outside of the New York State jurisdiction, uh, mid year is sort of the halfway point in our Masonic calendar year where we get together as a jurisdiction, and um, the Grandmaster gives an address. Um, we also meet um, not only with the brothers, but also the sisters are a part of that experience as well. And we kind of just understand the state of the craft at that time of the year. Um, a lot of fellowshipping and a lot of times um, brothers meet for the first time and then they continue to meet every year. Yeah. So me and Mark have been connected. Yeah. At least I feel like it's been at least 10 years since. Yeah. We've, we've it feels like that. Before. Yeah, definitely. Like... Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, now that you know, sort of the, the background behind this podcast again you know the bottom line is history is important leadership mm -hmm. is important we hope that this podcast will provide uh, both of those things some some guidance in terms of leadership and as well as be able to be a historical uh, reference for anybody that's looking to come back and, and understand 
what our thought processes were at this time. So with that, um, Mark, let's let's get into a little bit about just some leadership from things that we learned. Um, yeah, definitely. When you your your first year in the East and over in Prince Hall, um, anything different that you experienced on this side versus when you're on the other side in terms of like leadership, how you need to show up. Um, and for folks listening, like this is on the fly right now. We didn't prepare for these questions yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. So this is off the cuff right now. Is, you're getting 100 mm-hmm. percent the real. Um. Well, I could definitely say the large um of course there's two in two different states the large that i was in and the large that i'm in now um uh, the large i'm in now is uh the both the lodges were strong at the time i mean the numbers wasn't as much i had about a half the size so i had 30 brothers when i was in uh, epsilon now we have, we have a little over 60 well when i was master we had about 60 um members so the it was more people to address I I was definitely more mature in general anyway, so I, I had a whole different approach and mindset up to what I was doing, where I was going mm-hmm. um, with with becoming master here. I was definitely looking forward to it wasn't it definitely wasn't about me in the sense of just it was more of preparing the brothers behind me, you know, mm-hmm. and just giving them a good example to um, follow and try to help them. So we can strengthen the laws in general, because, you know, in, in every sense, we need to make sure we have good leaders. So that, I think that was the the biggest difference at that time, as far as being master then and being master now and mm-hmm. going into it. You know, I mean, being master in Prince Hall was way more busier. You know, I had to, you know, I had to things that I had to do that structural I didn't have to do over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically over there I just had to take care of my, my members and that was it you know make sure everything got done or whatever mm-hmm. but over here as you know we I have to I have to prepare a trestle board <laughs> you know I have to um, attend certain functions and things like that make yeah. sure that the lodges go out you know we go set up visitations and things like that right so you know make sure we got a chance to do that and above all you know try to make sure that the members are happy as possible mm. Um and enjoying their time in masonry, whether I'm all about um, education, but I still want to make sure that uh, our brothers are having fun uh, while doing it. So that was the biggest differences for myself. Oh man, that's great. Yeah. yeah I mean, the fact that you had double the membership your second time or your, your second stint, mm-hmm. I'm sure you probably had that, that support. I'm making an assumption right now because you can have 100 members and have like three active brothers. <laughs> but, you know, I'm making a huge assumption because one, one twenty three. Listen, every every lodge has the same thing. Nobody has all their members out, <laughs> and but, um, we all know that most of us, a lot of us, know the the twenty. What is it? The eighty twenty rule. Oh yeah. You know, so if you got more than twenty percent of your your lodge active, that's that's a good start. And I definitely had that. Um, we had a rotation. Um, still have a rotation about thirty. 30 brothers that come out for the most part. Um, and that's a, on a rotation basis besides, yeah. you know, the offices and things like that. But you always kind of count, you know, you got brothers out of town. Somebody, you know, some of them might right. be older, you know, right. that can't make it out. So nobody has 100% of their membership that's active to help out. But they definitely were there. And um, I had all the support that I needed. And the large did. And, um, you know, we continue to grow and get better with that. That's good. It's good. How about on your side? Did you, yeah, you know, how was your support system as, as far as that? Yeah, our lodge was going through a, a huge transition period, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. 2022 being probably like the first like normal year or pseudo normal year out of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, we had two years where we were shut down essentially, um, while at the same time still dealing with um things from the past that we were trying to rectify. Um and just helping brothers to kind of get over hurdles from the past, but also just kind of rebalancing the operations. Mm-hmm. And so like my, my whole focus where I wish I could have spent more time sort of like on the, the fun aspects of masonry my first year, my mm-hmm. entire focus the first year was getting back to the basics, um, making sure everybody was made whole. Um, and so yeah. the things like making sure deuce cards were in their yeah. hands, like immediately. Certificates, like, stuff like that. <laughs> I know, right, work for Sandino. Like, it was like, this guy cannot call me. Yeah, you call me one more time. <laughs> it's going to be a problem when I see. Like, I was calling this man all the time, yeah. emailing them, tech, like, sending mm-hmm. a report in. 
when I see you at mid-year, please, I would love to be able to have our deuce card so we can make sure brothers feel like they they got what they needed. Um, getting and we got them that year. We did get them that year. Right? Oh, that yeah. Year, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Trust and believe. <laughs> yeah, no. We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> um, but deuce cards was one thing that was holding brothers up for a long time. They were like, man, I didn't get my deuce cards and uh, these things. And so I wanted to make sure that they, they, they got the deuce cards. We had brothers that were raised. We had about um, 13 brothers, 12, 13 brothers that were raised during the COVID time period. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure they got their certificates. That was another mm -hmm. thing that I was hearing a lot about, like brothers not getting certificates and they were like mm -hmm. hung up on the certificate piece, um, mm -hmm. not feeling whole. And I get it. Like, yeah. you, you know, mm -hmm. you, you've worked hard, you've gone through all your degrees. You want to make sure you get your certificate. So I made sure I focused in on getting those certificates. You going to say something? Yeah, I'm gonna say, I mean, I get it, but you know, like for me personally, that's just like I'm just honest and for me personally or whatever, just do the work. The certificate gonna come and ain't going nowhere. Because I, I know personally, because if speaking of that, again, on the other side, you know when I got my master make certificate? <laughs> when I was worshipful master. <laughs> so it took me like six <laughs> years for me to get it, and I made sure I got it. I'm but, just saying, brother, as, as the leader of the lodge at that time, I know, of course, I said, no, hey, as a leader, no, as a leader, that's what you do. Like right. I said, because that's the same thing I did. When I became master, I make sure I got mine and everybody else got this. Because <laughs> everything you said in terms of like, just do the work. Yeah, was, yeah. I was hearing it. I was sitting there yeah. as I was. I wasn't even a member of the lodge. I was hearing it. Yeah. yeah. I became a member of the lodge, still hearing it. I'm like, okay, yeah, you got to make this right. So, yeah, of um, course, of course. you know, and so I, I was, I was, I was laser focused on making sure we, we make sure these brothers have a good experience. And if anybody needed anything that they didn't get, make sure they mm -hmm. got that. Yep. Um, also stay laser focused in on making sure we got our reports in on time, laser focus in on getting communications out. Like I was literally in the blocking, blocking and tackling mode the whole first year. It's like, do we, do we have mail? If there, is everybody receiving their mail on time, mm -hmm. um, making communicate, make sure communications get sent out. I started doing robo calls just to make sure brothers got the information. Got you know, I, mm -hmm. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I was spending like thirty five bucks a month just doing yeah. the robo calls and say, "Hey, we used this to is do what that." We got going on. <laughs> yeah. We used to do that. Damn, last time I remember, Damon Wright, uh, we had the robo calls going on. Yeah, yeah. Came in. yeah. Yep. And then mm -hmm. um, just uh, making sure that the ball was successful, making sure that we brought new men into the craft. Mm -hmm. Um, again, this is all sort of fundamental. To me, it's this is foundational stuff. Like you want to make sure that you're handling your business, yep. make sure that you are bringing in new members, make sure that you are able to raise money so that you can do charitable work in the organization. Um, I had a a a four sort of pillar philosophy. Um, mm -hmm. I call it the four B's of the beehive. I think brothers of who know me you have got seen your it. four. If you do your four, then I'll say my three. Yeah. The four B's, four <laughs> B's. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and it's funny that uh, right workflow Sandino was um was saying something similar but it just mm -hmm. used different words but the four b's are we got brotherhood mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. books mm -hmm. and then we have a building right so okay. it's making sure that we we focus in on the brotherhood and and mm -hmm. strengthening those bonds mm -hmm. making sure that we stay in those um in the business and make sure we handle the business of the lodge that's mm -hmm. the charity work that's the making sure our dues are paid making sure all our bills are paid uh make sure we do charitable work Third is being in those books, making sure that brothers understand the ritual, make sure brothers understand the constitution. Um, I used to do seven minutes of light at every meeting and just sort of say, nice. okay, let's talk about 25 landmarks. Let's talk about something that you may not know about. And then fourth was our building. So our building, I don't know about your, your buildings, but mm -hmm. the, our building is in some dire need of some repairs, still mm -hmm. in some dire need of repairs. And so it was really focused in on what can we be doing right now? What's some small wins that we could be doing to help beautify our building, help to raise some money so that when the time comes, we're able to do some renovations and, and God is good. So right now we're actually be, being able to do some renovations uh, to the building uh, with some of the funds that were raised during my administration, but also during this administration now. So our workflow master is doing a great job with his team to, um, just to keep bringing that forward. So those are my four B's. What were, what were your four B's? Yeah, I had, I had three. Okay. And um, I used it all for, it wasn't B's particular, but um, as we know, uh, there's three large pillars that support Freemasonry, wisdom, power, and beauty, wisdom, mm. strength, and beauty. So I mm. used those as a way of doing the same thing that mm. you did. <laughs> so, of course, wisdom was about the the ritual work and uh, the, the light and things like that. You know, the strength is all about the business, make sure all your business is taken care of, and the beauty is the brotherhood. You know, mm. getting up, I mean, that's the, way I, that's the way I always seen it. So... 
You see, we always gonna get those parts out. It might be different ways, but those are basically the foundation that you That's need. it. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. it. We don't need to overcomplicate this, man. It's, it's <laughs> exactly. It's yeah, very yeah, simple. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The execution is the key, though. That's the key. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that is mm -hmm, the key. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we uh, you know, we we had the 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 question that we asked everyone, and uh, again, I'm gonna we're gonna bring out the honesty. This question came about from uh. Grand, uh, excuse me, Junior Grand Warden Kevin Wardali. He had put out a post one time talking about effective leadership, and so I, from that point, I was like, so what exactly is effective leadership? And that's why we wind up harping it on 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 the podcast itself. So, what do you see as effective leadership? Yeah, that's it's a loaded question. I mean, mm -hmm. even when you sent me the text message about it, I was like, man, that's a really <laughs> good question, but it's a loaded question too. Okay. Um, but you know, effective leadership. For one, is leadership in general. The cliche is leadership is all about influence, mm -hmm. and so yeah. um, in my mind, effective leadership is just being able to successfully um, have other people, whether in our case, other men, mm -hmm. um, believe and act in the in the way in which you know we're trying to guide them, and so they are. You can call them followers or whatever you want to call them, but at the end of the day have you as a leader been able to influence someone to either believe something that that's needed to be believed or have them act in a way that's necessary. And usually if they believe something, they'll act in a certain way. And so as a leader to be effective, be effective in your leadership, either through your relationships that you were able to establish or the way you're able to communicate, um, you got to help other men be able to see your vision, believe in your vision, and then be able to act on uh, on the work that's needed to be done to help with that vision and a large part of that is them being a part of creating the vision um sometimes you just got to move um and they just got to trust kind of to trust the process and then sort of regroup um that was a lot of the case uh i want to say in my first year where it was just like we just need to kind of right the ship on a certain air in certain areas um however in hindsight you know i wish i would have spent a little bit more time um bringing brothers into the fold more in terms of the planning. I know that would have slowed down the process and we may not have accomplished as much in the short term, but in the long term, I think we probably would have done even more. Um, but that's sort of like, you know, wisdom dwelling and contemplation, re retrospective type of thing. Um, but that's, that's in my mind, really pretty simple in terms of effective leadership is just being able to successfully have other men um, or other people either believe, believe and act um, in the way in which we need to go um, based on the sort of vision that you that you lay out and hopefully it's a collective vision what yeah, about you? Uh, well, the first thing I got to say as far as your answer is um, you had to have a vision <laughs> that, <laughs> that, part. Part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that part that part as it goes from the bible those um without vision the people perish you know so we need to have a vision in which um a direction in which the lodge is going for them to buy into now as far as um now my effective leadership again i knew we was going to say this and ask a bunch of different questions to different people so i had wrote mine down before we started the podcast <laughs> so, because i didn't want to get influences by a by answer even though it can't change but this is my original answer before we started all good podcast, all good that's that's right? my original answer <laughs> exactly so mine was uh um set the set a good example um, communicates goals and the doings of what's going on well. Um, gets as many people get as many people they can involved in the works and to train the people behind them. Mm. Um, that's the way that I feel that's effective leadership because those are the things that's going to lead to the the large getting better or whatever whatever organization or whatever getting better and for the future. But you also continue on getting better if you lend that training of the people behind you. And of course, you can't do nothing without effective communi uh, communication. Like you said, in order for them to buy in, you have to communicate to them exactly what it is. Know where they, knowing knowing them is a good part of it because you can see and know how much this person really can do or what he can't do right. and things like that. So all those parts is important. But yeah, that's how I, I that's what I feel is a effective leadership. Yeah, I, and I love the part and I wish I would have done more of this too. Um, mm. I love the fact that you were helping to build other leaders behind you, mm -hmm. right? Like the sign of a good leader is how many, how many 
other leaders have you made? What they say? What well, mm-hmm. make another yeah, hole, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's fantastic that you you were intentional about that, and I thought that was a really really good sign of leadership from you. Again, well, as um, our well, I could say our yeah, because you and Scottish right too. <laughs> our deputy Hamar Simpson always, I know he stresses that to me all the time, and I I kind of feel the same way as far as like I know I'm not gonna be here this long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether right. it's either in position or, you know, I mean, right now I'm in flux as far as how much I might be involved in information in general, but you got to be able to strengthen the people behind you if yep. you want this thing to continue. <laughs> you know, you can't forget about them, you know. Um, you know, like uh, the saying goes, we, we, we're trying to grow the tree so that the people behind us can live in that shade. We mm-hmm. might not never be there to see that tree grow all the way, but we're going to make the plants. Hopefully it grows. They water it. And, you know, they live in the shade of the tree that we planted. And that's, you know, the goal here. It should be the goal here because it's definitely not about me. I'm going to enjoy my time when I'm here, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but yep. it, it, it ain't about me. It's about the organization, and about the brothers. So that's where we stand as far as that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't know where we was going from the next from the next uh, aspect. No, nah, man. I mean, there's probably like some bloopers we could share about like things that we you know <laughs> we experienced throughout our time. Um, I mean, I know we asked the, we asked about mentorship. Um, mm-hmm. both of my primary mentors in masonry, um, obviously, right works for Hill that we interviewed in episode one, huge mentor of mine even before um being in the East. And even more so as being in the East, um, but my two uh, deans who, who who helped bring me into the craft back in Buffalo, um, right, worked for Wilbur Banks from St. John's Lodge Number no. Sixteen, and um, right, worked for Gaston Custer uh, from Ionic Lodge Eighty Eight. Uh, both served as sort of co-deans for uh, my class, and my class was interesting because. It was a combination of multiple lodges. Then we went through all three degrees together and all all study class together throughout that time. So it was it was an interesting dynamic. I hadn't seen that too often, um, if at all, actually, since I've actually been raised. Um, so it was eighty eight. Um, it was uh, Electric City in Niagara Falls, um, Master Craftsman in Buffalo, one ten, and um, and um, St. John's sixteen. And so we were all in the class together Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off Thursday, and then back Friday for our entire wow. time for mm-hmm. all three degrees. And so those two brothers um, really drilled in us the importance. They were both grand uh, district deputy grand lecturers at the time as well, emeritus. Um, so they drilled into us the ritual. Um, and the ritual has always stuck with me, even to this day. It's like, one of the most important, if not the most important aspect of masonry, because absent of the ritual, we are every other organization in this world that does charitable work. And so yep. um, when people talk about the importance of the ritual, I say it's the only thing that makes us different in, than joining the NAACP or shout out the NAACP or any other organization that does this type of work. It's like, mm-hmm. it's the ritual. So you need to be in that book, in that ritual, mm-hmm. understand it. That's what makes us different. So those two men were uh, a huge influence to me in masonry. And there, there's so many other other men that, that played a big role. Um, Kermit Petty. Um, it's just it's a lot of a lot of brothers from back in the day. David Banks still to this day, brothers that just kind of um, set the path for me. Um, Hugh Dougal is is the man that made me a, a honorary member of Eureka Lodge, and to this day he he's still right, he's still on me <laughs> as a, even as a past master, which which I appreciate nice. and I love. And so mm-hmm. uh, another uh, informal mentor um, in that regard. How about yourself? Um, well, I know of course I have uh, mentors again uh, from from the other side that actually I would say helped me make me the mason that I am today. Mm. Um, uh, that's uh, Brother Lauren Whitfield, um, Brother um, Walden, and Brother Tim Roberts. Rest in peace. He passed away a few years back. Um, yeah, those three. And they was, you know, just a few years younger than me. Uh, yeah, about about 10 years older than me, somewhere around that, nine, 10 years older than me, about that, somewhere around there. And um, they, they actually 
gave me the fire as far as especially studying history mm. and and masonry itself and knowing the importance of the things like that and uh the esoteric side those brothers actually imparted that into me and uh Lester's brother Breedy also over there too he was um definitely a good example for me and coming over to Prince Hall um all the past masters in Sons of Kings Lodge number 123 have been uh, amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely supportive definitely any time that I needed them you know they're there for me Particularly, of course, uh, my I would say my top two mentors in Sons of Kings would have been uh, Derek Pritchett and Fitzgerald, my current worship master, Fitzgerald Boyce, along with uh, also um, Eddie Rodriguez and Carlos Rodriguez, the, the Rodriguez brothers. <laughs> Those two are the four that I came closest to whenever I needed help, particularly when I was a uh, worship master. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I needed any advice and things and to that nature, um, I turned to them when I got my my lonely periods, as we mentioned before, how lonely it could be in the East sometime. Yeah. I have uh Carlos Rodriguez, Eddie Rodriguez, and uh Ed Maddox. Brother Ed Maddox is down in um North Carolina. They helped and guide me through those lonely periods and you know, um help me get through that. But in general, outside of Sons of Kings, also, um Al Lewis, the second district, definitely. Ledrick Hall, definitely. Um, Alonzo Ivory from the Gustisri side, but he also taught me some other lessons in um, for the Blue Lodge that helped me out a lot. Yeah, and then, I mean, currently I have, I found more recently uh, um, as far as like Harmon Simpson and um, e, e, e Pass Grand, E. Alice Oliver Oliver Thomas E. Thomas Oliver. Let me get that right. right. <laughs> e. <laughs> Thomas Oliver. <laughs> it's a weird set of um, situation, but yeah, those um, brothers um, found me worthy to pour into me and spend mm. some time with me. <laughs> it's, That's yeah, important, right. though. Like, yeah, they don't yeah. have to talk to you. Like they, they literally <laughs> don't have to talk to you. But when they decide <laughs> to, it's like yo, exactly. Like, it is. I, 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 I highly appreciate it. Um, because it helped help guide me to um make the, some good decisions and decisions that um benefit the craft a whole. And uh, I really thank them for that. So those are mainly my my I would say my mentors here in Prince Hall. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Now, now that you got me thinking too, now I gotta go down my list here. I got a couple other <laughs> brothers right now. They see this, yeah. they're like, wait a minute now, hold on. Yeah, they, yeah. anybody else just just the, for both of us, just blame it on the, the head. Blame it the on heart, the head, people. not the heart. But yeah, <laughs> but but in all seriousness, like like um right words for Eugene Cruz. Um, he's a past master that has done a lot for the, the lodge here and always has an open door policy in terms of reaching out to him and being able to support him, um being supportive. Um, right words for Jason Richardson from a lecturer standpoint, like he and I were doing classes at senior warden to help us continue to bridge that gap um, in terms of brothers, ritualistic knowledge. So huge mentor from a ritualistic standpoint and just continue to, to perpetuate that, that whole fact that the ritual is, is the key is, is super important. Um, then also we have past master, right words for Jimmy Haynes, um, he and I used to have lunch together and just have conversation, even though he's going through dialysis treatments and having all sorts of medical illnesses, always had a, a positive spirit and always was very helpful to this day, still super helpful in terms of whatever we need uh, in terms of the lodge. And so um, definitely want to make sure I shout out those brothers for their support always. And, and also past master Calvin Hubbard from a, a spiritual standpoint, um, his brother, um, Sir, I, he and I have conversations as I'm doing road trips down to New York City, just calling him, picking up the phone, calling him, giving me the, the, the conversations around the spiritual journey. He's a high priest now again in the Red House, but um, can always call him for just sort of that spiritual guidance. So definitely salute to those brothers. Definitely appreciate and thanks to those brothers who have who served as a mentor and guide for me personally. Again, please blame my head and not my heart, brothers. It's 20 years in masonry in June. So I'm just trying to, uh, you know, it's been a lot of brothers that have been a part of my journey. So exactly. I appreciate you all, even if I didn't miss your name. Same here. Same here. Now, as, as we now both junior past masters on our lodge, 
how are you interacting with your current worship master, helping him in any way, and you know, not stepping on his toes. Well, you know, we still serving <laughs> as we still serving fake ass master for another couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't gotta do that. I got a past master in mind. So I... <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm I know, just joking though. I mean, I seriously, the way I what the way I've been thinking about this because I've been kind of trying to be intentional about it is um I'm currently the secretary of the lodge right now. So a lot of the work I do is just try to make sure that we keep the order and keep the business intact and that we don't lose sort of ground in that space. And so like the first three months of the year for me personally, was intentional about still being super active, uh, checking in with the master, making sure that he's good, whatever he needs done is done. Then kind of laying out the year for him or helping him to understand kind of these things are coming up because mm -hmm. I know these mm -hmm. things are coming up Just be prepared for him you know, setting the stage for him, writing um, communications and then letting him do his thing with those things. Um, making sure that understanding some of the protocol procedure all type of things is he's doing mm -hmm. a fantastic job picking it up even after three months. And so mm -hmm. um, I was intentional the first three months about being pretty active. Uh, now this next quarter is going to be more of a kind of a sort of sit back and just um, still be involved, but also let him and his team do their thing. Cause it's important for him to build his own, his own, you know, sort of team legacy those sort of things with his wardens things he's he's already doing those things but i'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be less involved in the sort of in the mix uh in that regard and just be more of a secretary and more of a an advisor as needed um mm -hmm. but i know he has more than enough other advisors in this corner but um trying not to step on his toes and make sure that um i'm just being a support because i i never I, my goal from this point forward is to have um no worshipful master that i that i could help um, have to go through any sort of the pains and the L's that I may have had to go through as worshipful master. Cause when you sit in that seat, you go through certain trials and tribulations and issues. And I never want anybody else to experience um, those, those trials and tribulations um, that I have, that I had to experience uh, if I can help it. So that's my number one goal is to make sure that their life um, as best as I can um, just be better as worshipful masters. So they can have a great time. Um, again, in another honest moment, if everybody attempted to do even that, I think we'd be a little further than we are. Because I, you know, as you know, we as when you worship, you hear a lot of worship masters complain about their past masters and go hard on them, whatever, whatever, and then they get out the seat and then they turn into one of them. Yeah, I'm not that. <laughs> I said no, no, no. I... <laughs> No, I am on your side, worship master. All worship master now and in the future. I, you got, yeah. you got one. You got one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got one here too. <laughs> you know? And that's a blessing I actually have in my lodge, where my my all my past masters always they help, but they ain't trying to be impede. They are mm. definitely not trying to be in the way. They are trying to let this worship master be right. the worship master, and they ain't trying to be worship master at the same time. Right. You right. know, um, we actually had and um doing that intentionally. Um, through talking with him, hey, I said from being an affiliated past master, that's one thing that we always felt important. You got to um, let that master be a master. I know, like I said, again, my my current worship master is a past master. I mean, he was a district deputy grandmaster. Mm -hmm. So I know he knows the work and know what to do. So basically, I just had to maybe catch him up on some of the stuff that we've been doing recently and how we've been doing it, you know, and plug those little things in. Um, so it wasn't that bad as far as as far as needing to help them to that nature but um you know i'm always there for them and uh even, even if it's something that's going different than what i was doing it or you know i would like it to be done i'm not going to be all in <laughs> all in the kool-aid or whatever as long yeah. as it ain't bad yeah I, you know I, at least not I, publicly I like you gonna yeah of course never I, never publicly never yeah. publicly yeah never publicly it always would be you know in private but even on that, I try to step back a little bit because I don't want to feel like I'm still trying to run a march. <laughs> you know, right. I know everybody got their own different ways of doing things. So that's why I kind of step back a little bit as far as that. But I'm always here, of course, if they need me in yeah. any way and manner, of course. So that's Absolutely. important. How about your your proudest moment? How was your you know, some of your proudest moments as a uh, worship master? Man, there was, it's, it's a couple of them. Um, the one... Well, there's two that stand out to me immediately. Um, mm -hmm. And I probably could think about some other ones for sure. Um, I have a son. His name is Mason, M-A-I-S-O-N. Um, mm -hmm. I want to say he was nine or 10 my first year in the East. Um, 
and my I have a daughter. Her name is Madison, and she is 21. She, I think she was 19 or 20 at the time, my first time in the East. Um, they your daughter when your daughter your birthday your daughter I think is not too far from my son. As far my as that. I my think daughter's birthday is in August. Okay, all right, that's what. Um, all right, and my son's birthday is in April. Okay, but, okay, cool. Good. But both of my kids and my wife were at the ball that we had our first year. Okay, um, and just having my family there, like this is the first time in twenty years of masonry that I had my entire like my nucleus, like my core. Yeah, got you. Mm -hmm. um, in that space, um, me as worshipful master there, seeing my son see me as worshipful master, mm -hmm. um, it was super important to me for him to be able to see that and then be in that space with all the other men um, in that space um, and having my daughter there with me who was with me. Um, she was born before I became a Mason. She seen me throughout my entire journey as a Mason and I have her there and then have my wife there as well. I just, that was just a special night. Um, you know, minus all the, all the work that went up to creating the, uh, the ball and making it a success and all those things. Um, mm -hmm. that night was just, that was a magical moment. Just being able to have my, my son and my daughter and my wife there at that, at that time there. And then, um, one with the brothers in particular was we did a, uh, a past master's night. I did a past master's night, um, a show of appreciation for the brothers. Um, mm -hmm. One of the past masters that I was able to give a certificate to um, past master, uh, Robert Frazier senior. Uh, mm -hmm. He ended up, uh, he actually passed away. Uh, I want to say last year. Um, and so that's memorable to me because he had a chance. We asked all the past masters to stand up and sort of give a little bit of information about who they are. Um, a little bit of background, uh, about who they were he stood up and he gave us some really good information about who he is because he, he didn't believe that men the brothers really knew who he was to a certain extent so um but also being able to give all the other brothers their um their past master certificates and then giving the two past the immediate past masters their aprons on that night um and making them whole i feel like that was all part of that like making brothers whole mm -hmm. sort of campaign i was on um that was a that was a great night to be able to um, give them their 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 aprons, their certificates, show them their love, mm -hmm. um, that they are um, respected and appreciated for the, the time that they put in the East. So those are the two that stand out to me right now. I'm sure that there's a couple other ones that I could call out, but those are the two that like immediately jump out to me. How about you? I had a few, definitely. Of course, it's, you got to go to the, the first night being obligated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Particularly always because, you know, I have the honor of having my first worship master there. So my first worship master doing Derek Pritchett, doing the first section. And, you know, I'm just about ready to cry mm -hmm. because, like, again, I, I, you know, everybody don't get that experience. And I know what it is, just knowing history or whatever, that I know I'm living the beginning part of this large. And it is always going to be heartwarming and, and very important to me. Um, so that was definitely one of them. Another particular one was um, we had uh, our past master Brunson is a goddaughter, just as having a baby or whatever. So, you know, the brothers got together and donated some money towards mm -hmm. her for the baby shower and stuff like that. That was cool. Um, uh, I, you know, well, during my year, particularly my large, but of course, during my year, I received my 33rd degree <laughs> in May, 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 30, 30, what? May 31st. So of course that was um very highly um proud and important and it was it was a nice experience overall mm -hmm. and uh, I did have one more that I was just thinking about and then it slipped my mind <laughs> but um but at awards you know, I got it uh oh yeah 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 at awards yeah, I yeah, got it yeah yeah oh yeah large of the year definitely at mid year that was a surprise I didn't know that was coming um so that was that was nice everybody was happy for that. I'm proud of that. Proud of the work that the uh, brothers did in order to receive that. Because mm. again, that's not me. Mercy Master, I almost see myself. I mean, I'm in there working too, but I'm, you know, basically right. facilitator, making sure everything gets done. Right. So um, that's that's on them. So that that work goes to them. And you know, um, yeah, that was like mainly the main proudest moments I had as Worsh um, of Sons of Kings 123. There's also little things. Well, the, the other little little thing, I'm I'm gonna say a little thing, but 
whenever brothers told me that they were happy, <laughs> that particularly warmed my heart. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When you've seen brothers, because I'm, you know, as you know, um, I'm kind of I'm quiet. So I'll I'll be in the room and I'm just watching people and watching them interact and I can feel the love and the the you know the happiness in brothers' hearts and stuff like that. But particularly like I said, when we were in we took a uh, road trip to DC to visit uh Bionic mm -hmm. Ionic 19. <laughs> I think 19. And um we had they have they have an amazing, amazing raising weekend. So mm. if anybody's free that first weekend in August, I definitely suggest you go down <laughs> to DC and um experience that work and experience those brothers, great brothers. But um yeah, during that time my brother was down there like, yeah, I'm just so happy to be a member of this large and I'm you know, that just you know brought me joy. So that was definitely the my proudest moments as worship master. Man, that's beautiful. And I it's not not to have the last word on that piece though, yeah. but I have to I have mm -hmm. to say this though. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a past master who was sort of like homebound. His uh, his name mm -hmm. was past master um John Danzler. And um mm -hmm. he was um brought up almost to say like, you know, in dudes in the rears. And so brothers that had okay. not known him, they hadn't seen him, they don't know him because he was mm -hmm. he was home. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but past master Hill made it a point to say, no, this brother has been very involved, very active. He's not in the lodge and he's not in actively in the lodge because he can't be here. Mm -hmm. Um, and he and I actually visited him. We went to his home, um, and we sat with him and he was just breaking down masonry to us and just to see the joy in his face about just having brothers come to his house and talk to him about masonry and all the years that he spent masonry, you look on his wall and it's like covered with nothing but masonry stuff from all the different houses and everything. Nice. Um, and then, uh, he ended up passing away like six months after that visitation. It was like, I'm like, wow. Like if I would have never got mm -hmm. the opportunity from Past Master Hill to be in his house or go visit him at that point, mm -hmm. I would have never got a chance to meet that man before. So okay. um, nice. that was huge. That was huge. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to make sure that that's, that's known for sure. Yeah. I mean, visiting your brothers is very important, especially the elderly, uh, elderly brothers. Can't forget them. Can't forget our our widows and orphans. Never can't forget, <laughs> forget them. Though all that type of things are very important. Yeah. I know we don't have too much time left, but one one particular part I definitely want to mention um, and ask is how did you prepare to be worship master? Like coming up during the years or whatever. Do you, any other advice you want to give as far as preparation? Man, I'm still learning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. No. Nah. <laughs> No, like like I said earlier, it was um it was intentional about um like getting in those books. Mm -hmm. So as senior warden, um understanding what I was getting myself into in terms of like the constitution, like what it what are the rules of the game? What do I need to understand in terms of how how this how this lodge is supposed to operate? Um staying in that ritual, understanding my my like being able to practice the opening. So I actually I studied the opening you know, my seat, my, as a senior warden opening and closing mm -hmm. as a senior warden. So that I was able to, to do that. It, we always hear that you need to be practicing for the opening as a junior warden. And as a, of course. you know, a lot of brothers don't do it, you know, mm -hmm. just in full mm -hmm. honesty, but yeah. I really spent mm -hmm. the time as a senior warden because um, mm -hmm. I didn't serve as a junior warden, but I spent the time as a okay. senior warden to learn the opening and closing. Um, not so that I could do it if the master wasn't going to be there because it was during COVID and like we weren't even meeting anyways, mm -hmm, but it was mm -hmm. to be prepared so that when the time came, I'll be able to, to, um, to do my duty and be able to do it. Well, um, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in, you know, not reading out the book and all those sort of things. And those, you know, we can have conversations and debates about that whole nine yards, but, um, there ain't was, no debate. We ain't supposed to be doing it in the debate. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I was intentional about <laughs> about studying, being in the book, um, understanding the uh, meeting the widows, understanding who the who the ladies were, um, mm -hmm. and then just having conversations with past masters about you know what to what to expect. Um, not to th not to say that I was guaranteed to be in the east, but it was sort of like if it's the lodge's will, you know, what sort of things do I need to be thinking about? Mm -hmm. uh, but again, primarily it was. Staying in those bylaws, studying the bylaws, studying the constitution, making sure I understood my ritual so that um, day one I was able to get in there. And then I also had ideas around the trestle board um, that year to say, you know, that 4B framework 
of the beehive. There's four bees for the beehive. That framework, I, I created that as a senior warden. So I, I wanted to make sure I knew what I wanted to focus on so that that meeting in January, I came there. This is sort of the trestle board. We don't need to debate. We don't need to figure this out. This is exactly what the trestle board is. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to focus in on. Now let's, let's figure out what specifically we want to um, do in terms of programs. But this is the focus areas, these four mm -hmm. areas. Okay. Um, so that's how, I, that's how I prepared. How about you? Uh, yeah, of course, the Constitution, ritual, bylaws, that's always needed to be studied. So I definitely got into that. But even further back, I would say not particularly aiming as worship master, but uh, any idea that I had that I think that would benefit the large, I would bring it forth mm. to the point that if I ever would become master, at least that's done. <laughs> I ain't gonna worry about that. I'm or we 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 a little bit further up. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I don't I don't need the glory of saying it was mine. I just need that done or it should be done yes. in order to benefit yes. the Lord. So by the time I come to the masses, then I ain't got too much to do. You know what I mean? If I could chill, I mean that's good. <laughs> to the to the to so a certain aspect. So I definitely try to do that. That's all part of my preparation to try mm -hmm. to get as much done before I get there. Yeah. So that by the time I get there, it'd be a little bit easier. Besides, like I said, the the constitution ritual stuff like that. Big shout outs also to um, Right Worshipful Gary Davis, mm. who he used to hold uh, worship master workshops on Zoom, and we went through a whole bunch of stuff so we could be ready to be. Or when I think I was a current at the time, or before all that time, and it was a big help. Um, to get his perspective and just some um, further education on that. And uh, that was, that was said. Also, like, again, uh, part of preparation is knowing your brothers. Mm. So I particularly make sure, well, I, I kind of do that every way. I, that's another yeah. habit I picked up from my old lodge is to try to know my brothers and call my brothers and keep in contact with them. But growing in uh, just maturing and reading re leadership books, all that too, in general. Just reading, you know what I mean, Masonic leadership books I got, <laughs> or just Masonic leadership books, uh, and just regular leadership books. Right. <laughs> you know? Um, it never ends. Yeah, never it ends. never ends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those type of things also was a big help as far as preparing, and as as everybody should know that know me, I'm the podcast king. So I <laughs> listen to a ton of podcasts, yes. whether it's about leadership or masonry in general or whatever. That's why I, for most of the time I have something to, some life to impart, because I learned it or I heard it, read it, either read it from a book or I heard it on a podcast or something to that nature. So those are the, uh, uh, many of the things that I did in order to prepare myself for Worshipful Master. Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, suggest the same to brothers if they can, you know, to definitely get prepared. If you want, if you want to be worship master of your lodge one day, begin now. I don't even care if you're not in a position, if you don't have any office at all, if you're ready, if you want to be worship master, not saying that you might ever be, but you should always get yourself prepared to be. And then most of the time, if you get yourself prepared to be, you will be. <laughs> at least closer probably, than you would if you weren't yeah, exactly, prepared <laughs> exactly exactly most likely like i said most likely you will unless you know you got some type of funky attitude or something like that mm -hmm. <laughs> that's turning brothers off to something to that nature right. other than that um you probably will be because you know the past masters will see your work and um they will again they most of the time if they you know they're good brothers they'll pour into you and guide you and help you get to that positions and your brothers will have the confidence in you if they know that you know what you need to know right. and they will elect you those positions and right. um, we should i mean i'm always at the point of um if they didn't if i was never worshiping master of sons of kings hey i was never worshiping master of sons of kings it would have been sons of kings lost that's where i look at it <laughs> <laughs> not that's not a you know big ego thing but i you know, i brought a little something so, yeah you brought value um, absolutely yes yeah, i'm saying i had some value to bring and that's how I kind of think of any position within the craft or whatever. If y'all want me, hey, then I got more time with my family. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of family too, like um, anything that you need to do to kind of set yourself up from a like leadership of your whole your household. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, in our particular jurisdiction, and I'm pretty sure in others, is always particular uh, events and things like that that you have to attend once you're a principal officer and stuff like that. So you should be preparing your your family as you go along in those seats right mm -hmm. um i know 
I always had uh, fell off a nail and that the um, boys a little bit older. Well, they grown now, 22 and 18. But when they were younger and growing up, I had a whiteboard and a refrigerator where I had all my meetings at, things like that. So everybody knew where I was going and what was mm -hmm. going on. So, you know, so um, the family knows exactly what it is. I mean, at, and they were younger too. They was also involved in Nice Pythagoras. Um, right. My my younger son, my younger son made it to uh, Master Night, and my older son Shamal made it to Senior Night. Nice. But um, they both were involved. Actually, June Jalen was a junior junior Grand Night <laughs> for for the uh, state for for like a year. So um, all working in the crowd. I love it. <laughs> love it. Yeah, they they yeah they did their thing for a little while. Um, so that was cool. And I enjoyed working with them in the Knights of Pythagoras when I had the time. But um, yeah, definitely you need to get your family prepared for that um the time that you're gonna spend in the crap and let them understand that, you know. And then, you know, that's how I said I did my two years. I when I went in, I said I'm gonna do no more than two years is mm -hmm. I need to step back for my family, especially coming out of COVID. It was kind of hard because we were spending a lot of time at home. Right, right. <laughs> you know, then you had to come back out and get back into the, the works of Freemasonry, spending the time away. But, you know, you got to always make sure you find a time for the family and make sure they know what's going on so that um, you can have the right mindset. Because if uh, your family is in disarray, you're not going to be 100 percent there for the craft. Not at all. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. the truth right there. If home, ain't, if home ain't right, and you know everything else sort of falls by the wayside. So I agree yeah, with you one hundred percent there. Trying trying to remember that ritual, you you won't it won't happen. Nah, <laughs> nah, it, it don't hit the same. It don't hit the same. same. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, Yeah. So so I know we we are. I think we had our time. This is an extended yeah. version. So mm -hmm. appreciate everybody for for staying tuned in. If you're still tuned in, but um, I definitely wanted to ask you if you have any sort of parting words about like what you learn or like key takeaways in terms of leadership from your time in the East. Um, anything that stands out to you in terms of how you grew as a leader or things that you um, are still working on in terms of a leader. Um, what do you think this podcast could do to help others as well? So, you know, sort of parting words in terms of leadership, but then also hopes for the podcast. As far as leadership, is concerned and what I learned as as virtual master or because I had a, a lot more um personalities to deal with um as virtual master this time. Um I I and I wasn't so much of a social like basically I I had to grow socially <laughs> mm. in order to but be a, a better master for myself too. Even going around visiting lodges and you know events and things like that. But um, I definitely needed to do that in order to build my leadership skills, in order to um, just understand that I had to maybe treat brothers different, um, understand that um, every decision ain't going to be, a, you know, the, the, the best decision that you just make the best decision that you can make. You know what I mean? Um, with the with the information that you have. And then you make that decision. And, you know, some people might not like the decision that you make, but you, you got to kind of live with it. And if, you know, and then you move on from there. Mm -hmm. um, everybody ain't going to like you, you know. Uh, but it's, it's, I ain't going to say it's, it, it, that was a weird position for me or whatever, only because not saying I went aim to be like, but I, Again, because I'm not that social. I really have. I don't have no beef with nobody. I don't have. You know right. I mean? Like, why are you mad at me? I, I don't. I, I don't even understand it. Because I'm. I don't even have. I'm not really, for the most part, mad at nobody else. You know, because everybody lived their life the way they live it. So, right. That was a, a few, definitely, the things that I learned as virtual master. Um, as far as the the hope for this podcast, again, um, that the brothers and the guests that we bring on will be able to impart some type of um, knowledge to the, the our viewership that can help them out, whether it's in masonry or in life in general. And also so that this can happen. People can see this, you know, uh, 50 years from now, hopefully YouTube still be around or whatever it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they'd be able to still learn those same lessons because there's nothing new under the sun as we see and from history, like that the Prince Hall charge, the same things that was going on at his time, but some of the same things going on now. 
So, you know, we can always learn from the from the past. So that's definitely my hopes for the past. And continue to let them, at the same time, our relationship grow. You know, you my boy. And, you know, and I Absolutely. enjoy the podcast because of that. So our relationship will continue to grow and get strong. So I definitely take that as definitely a plus from this podcast also. Definitely. No, I, I agree. I echo everything you just shared in terms of the uh, the host of the podcast, um, that we get the real from, from brothers around mm-hmm. leadership, what they experience um transparency and mm-hmm. that uh it just helps the next generation of leaders just kind of grow just from from our mistakes and from our from our accomplishments you know just all yep. positive growth here it's all about making us better um in terms of leadership for me it you know it was kind of one of those ebbs and flows sort of activities where you know you high one day low another but so it's, I've, I've always, i always just try to learn that um not to get too high and not to get too low mm-hmm. it's like the same people that, that that'll gas you up that you're doing such a great job be the same ones that light you on fire. So it's yeah. like, don't yeah. get too high on the successes, don't get too low on the on the on the downturns. Just you know, try to keep it even, keep executing, keep doing the work, uh, mm-hmm. keep showing up consistently. Um, and then just be the type of leader that you want to have. And so I just try to be like, if if I'm looking for a leader, somebody to lead me, I just want to be that leader. Um, knowing that everybody's not going to be me, but I'm just the way I kind of operate is like, okay, how am I showing up? What I want to follow me in this moment, right? Now? Exactly, yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. you know I mean? that's how that saying. Like they always say, like if, if you be the person you want to date, like would well, you want to date me? It's the same type of thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's everything. And to your point around like folks won't like everybody's not going to like you. Um, mm-hmm. Understand, you know, that's one of those things when you come into a brotherhood. You thinking like it's gonna be you know brotherhood we're gonna be all together cool you know it's yeah. gonna be you know that that switch between being senior ward and being worth for master is real <laughs> it's real i don't even know why that's the why that's a thing but it's real okay mm-hmm. um but you know being able to be in that space understand like you got a job to do mm-hmm. um you have a responsibility to the craft and as long as your 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 motives are pure you mm-hmm. know that your motives are pure you know that you're not violating any constitution, any anything that's that's the law of the land, mm-hmm. um, and you're just doing your best. You know mm-hmm. how somebody else feels about you is a hundred percent out of your control, and it's exactly. more than likely more about something that they're working on internally than what you are doing externally. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, those are the kind of things that I have to, that I'm working on. I'm still working on my communication and my patience. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a fast moving guy, like I. I move like time is super important and precious. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm moving. I don't have really, mm-hmm. I'm working on the patience to be able to just kind of slow down. And so I've slowed down, I've slowed down a lot more than I was three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still got a lot more room to grow in terms of like the patience and, and being able to slow down. Um, Cause when you slow down, you can develop those relationships. You're not in a hurry when you're trying to create relationships, you're not trying to, talk to somebody relationship bill so you can move on to this and you know you yeah. just take your time let it cook you know mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. how things work they work so uh, i'm just being intentional and I'm, i just want to put that out in the ethos that i'm still working on sort of like slowing down in that patience piece because i think it's going to just help with the execution with the relationships um just the whole all around is becoming just a better guy yeah understood understood definitely well this is great bro yeah, we got, we got our, our, our solo episode on. Yes, um, this uh, might be the longest you. one that we're gonna have too. By the way, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Just a little over an hour, ain't too much. I don't know exactly. I know we had a little technical difficulty, so we didn't start exactly ten. Yeah. So it's a little bit over, but yeah. um, definitely would thank everybody for um, joining us this evening. Uh, see us on YouTube, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things that, that. needed to be done. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hit, hit the bell. Hit all the bell. <laughs> So you know when the next one come out, nice and early, so you'll be on time. Because Wag gonna be on time. He he he's he's on he's on point. You know what I mean? Execution, so, baby. Exactly. That's what it is. So, um, thank everybody for again joining us, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely.